So good afternoon. Today I am here with Farnoosh and myself, and we are here to uh, bring you the chart of Queen Elizabeth II. And this chart is being done in whole sign. Now for fair disclosure, Farnoosh is a degree holding medical astrologer. And I am a student at this time of medical astrology. Both Farnoosh and I met through participating in another astrology program that was a psychological astrology program that took what is a two year program. So we've had some time, although not that long, to familiarize ourselves with each other and our style of readings. Now, I am a psychological, psychic, tarot card, astrology reader, and I have a good deal of Uranus, so some of the way I see the natal chart or the, the readings is going to be a bit out of the box, and so to be fair, this is one of my truths. And Farnoosh, however, will begin this reading, and she is a very uh, competent and traditional medical reader, and that'll help me, obviously, to stay on track because I get pretty um, esoteric. So you, I would say that to expect from both of us a little bit of a balancing between the esoteric uh, type of reading versus the really just down to earth medical chart reading. Now, when we started this chart process, I would say we started it three weeks ago or so where we decided that we were going to select her uh, after her death, which was, um, oh my goodness, do I have the date written down here? September 8th, 2022 at age 96. And there's been a good deal of fanfare what all of this means for all of us in terms of a global perspective. It's, there's a lot of fear and, and that will not be where we go. We will not be providing any political type of uh, commentary and nor is this reading to be taken as a political reading. This reading is for entertainment purposes only. We are not diagnosing, nor are we medical doctors, and nor are we allowed to diagnose. We are providing education. This is an educational process that we are entering into. And so any and all things said may be taken with a grain of salt, plus or minus your, your choice. But from there, I now hand this over to Farnoosh to begin explaining Queen Elizabeth II's natal chart. Thank you so much, Deborah, for that beautiful intro. So, as uh, you said, Deborah, we're going to be looking at it from many different angles. Uh, of course, there's always the psychological aspect too that we'll look at because that's very much what we love to look at the the connection between mind and body, right? Correct. Yes. So I'm looking at Queen Elizabeth II's chart, born April 21st, 1926 at 2.40 a.m. in Mayfair, England. And we're looking at, right now I'm looking at the whole sign. So what we see right now is the whole sign chart, which is what we use for the medical astrology, following the tradition. So the first thing I personally look at right away is the sun. Uh, and that's because the sun, of course, it's one of the most important planets in our health. It's our vital force. And certain signs of the zodiac have really strong vital force. Those would be Taurus, Aries, and Scorpio. So Queen Elizabeth, she has sun in Taurus, zero degrees and 15 seconds, in the third house. It's not aspecting any other planet. And what stood out to me initially was this kind of aspect of the sun, as well as the Saturn in Scorpio, very powerful Saturn, next, very close in a six degree angle to uh, conjunction to her in heaven. 
And so midheaven being the top of the chart is very prominent, right? So it's the, the thing that the, the figure that she's representing to the public, the midheaven, the 10th house being the, well, the Saturn's in the ninth house, but if we, I calculated it to be a conjunct with the midheaven. What about you, Deborah? I would I would agree with that very much so and then if you look at the energy of it going from a Scorpio something deep and from some some alternate past okay and then it goes into the 10th house where it's put forward as actionable and fire but it's also high faith that this was something that was set in motion by some greater greater cause that you know the, the, this was in, in other words she was fated to be queen right it's so obvious and especially if you look at the placidus the psychological chart i think what's what i see there is what stands out to me is the fact that her ascendant is in capricorn so saturn rules capricorn so you know the first thing i do is always look at the chart ruler which is the the planet that rules the sign of the ascendant that would be Saturn and then Saturn's placement up there on the midheaven Saturn representing authority uh someone who is really disciplined and really in charge like an authority figure and also represents status it also represents uh achievement high achievement and someone who's very very uh has good physical stamina i would say also opposite to the sun and taurus so that saturn and that sun and their relationship is really really important here i would say when we look at it both psychologically as far as her personality and also her her physical stamina and her you know she lived to be uh, old old age she lived to be old age and saturn is the 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 god of old age Right, it represents aging and time. So I think that really that really speaks of her and also her physically. You're gonna talk more about the physical part, but yeah, yes, I, yeah, we could we could segue into that where so what what she's talking about is that when we have moon in Taurus, our vital force is really high. Now we're gonna go over to the ascendant and we're gonna talk about some of the strategies that we as astrologers might use. And one of them is something that I used and that Farnoosh and I discussed, and I'm looking around for my little book that I had, but it's body, uh, it's called Body Types written by, um, oh, it's written by Judith Hill. And here is the cover, if you can see it, and you can see that it has Zodiacal Man on it, okay? And we'll talk about that as well. But what we're going to talk about right now is Body Types. Oh, you can't see the cover? No, I couldn't see it. I, I can only see a blank space. Okay, can you see it now? Nope. Higher. Huh. I think you have to hold it higher. Okay, how about here? How about here? A little bit. I can only see the top of it. I think you have to hold it a lot higher. Okay, here, let's try this. Tell me when you see it. All right, I'm gonna just not worry about it because we're having a hard time getting that yeah, in the camera. Stand up and look and show it. It seems like yeah, but I'm sitting in my car, so I just oh, no. disclosure, people. I'm at a, on a camping trip in uh, in Volcano National Park. I have chosen to come here to study. It helps me to study here in this environment. So what we're talking about is a Piscean body type, okay? Her ascendant in Pisces. And you see that in addition to her being a Pisces body type, she's also got Venus, which is going to make her a type two body type. There are two types, Piscean. One is going to be kind of a little bit more demure, a little less out there. It's going to be a little bit more watery, uh, liquidy. They're going to be a little heavier. They're going to have a little bit rounder, more apple-shaped type of body. Their face is going to have a little bit bigger, more pronounced features. Their lips are going to be bigger, their nose, their eyes. Their chin is going to jut a little differently. Um, you know, they're just, it's a, the Piscean body type one is one type of energy. And then what we have here with 
Queen Elizabeth is the, the second expression of Pisces. And this is per Judith Hill's book. So I want to make sure I'm offering proper credit. And this is Judith Hill, The Astrological Body Types. Very good book, very worth getting. But at any rate, um, that Queen Elizabeth had a, a more of a, like a, like a fairy being, a uh, fairy folk and an elf or facial, facial features that were small and delicate. She was pretty. Um, with a with a really uh, upturned nose and 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 fine fine build, uh, she had lovely eyes. She that you know she just she just was beautiful. She had uh, she was small. She had some mercury petiteness, and in some ways was able to put across. The sweetness of uh, of Mercury with the sweetness of a, of a Venusian, and one of the paintings that reminds me of her is the Mona Lisa, because it's a very stoic painting of this little dainty whim, woman that we've all really been enamored with over the years. And she's a Virgo type, so just do keep in mind that. No matter what, when you're using body types, there's a lot to be considered. So it's it's um, you would want to really have a lot of very big time skills. And so by the time we're getting back to Mona Lisa, we're talking a Virgo like grace and detail. So in some regards, what was interesting about Queen Elizabeth and what is interesting about her chart from a whole sign perspective is that she has all of these little interesting details right for a princess that's perfect right so but what's what i guess i would like to kind of direct back towards you farnoosh is this is her son is in zero degrees in in uh, the third house in taurus and it is below the horizon so in other words she was born in the cold of night okay at 2 40 a.m so that is telling me that she's not necessarily for someone who has a Taurus son all that sensitive. And in addition to that, there's only one planet in Earth, and it happens to be the sun that's connected to nothing. How would you interpret that? Right. That is a very, very good insight and um, observation um, because yes you're right the uh, Pisces ascendant and also the Neptune being at 10 degrees to the moon I mean it's a little bit of a far conjunction but it's still it's within the vicinity so she has that Neptune Pisces Venus in Pisces is always highly sensitive but then she's got that unaspected sun in Taurus very like dirty, stoic Taurus on its own, disconnected from all the other parts of the chart. So, you know, what? that's a really, really good point that it's the only one in Earth. So what, yeah, that, I, I would say that, I mean, I said, you said it beautifully that it would make her less, you think, less sensitive. Yes, and I mean, and I think that what, what we have seen or witnessed as people observing her and have scratched our heads and not really fully understood is perhaps some of the collateral damages to her children because you know from our perspective they've lived the perfect lives very you know there's a monarchy right they come out on the stage and they look beautiful as a family but what i really guess i'm wondering maybe is okay she has this exalted sun or excuse me this exalted uh, moon in leo in the sixth house squaring her sun in some ways. Now that again, we're talking very loosely orbed, but in medical astrology now, this is something else that we, we consider. The sun and the moon are so important in terms of our vital force. Yeah. We have to look at where these features lie. And in this sense, her both her sun and her moon are below the horizon, meaning yeah. that it's very difficult for her to 
actually be receptive and see the needs of her children. I mean, and that's that because it's in Leo on top of it and in the details. So, and we think of our moon as is the quintessential mother. And what you said about the moon and the sun being on the bottom of the horizon, I think this is a very important uh, insight because like uh, the first word that comes to me, just by that description alone, the moon and sun being below the horizon. So imagine like dark of the night in the middle of the night, I sense this coldness. Like, I yes. Cold. Yes. And what is one of the chief complaints about this person well if you happen to be someone of um, shall we say a foreign let's person there are many complaints that she has been disregarding to those of of ethnic nature right and you know we don't have any we don't have anything to say you know in terms of that she's committed any kind of acts of of darkness that we could actually point to but but what we because as a queen she's more of a figurehead she's not really in charge of the policies any more than you or i would be and and i think that's a, a fairness that we need to offer her yeah yeah and i think but just looking at it astrology astrologically you know aquarius being right opposite to that moon uh you know opposite to that moon right there we have two two planets in Aquarius and Aquarius is the coldest sign in the zodiac so uh, the moon doesn't really have a good relationship with Aquarius right because the moon doesn't want to feel cold because the moon is already cold the moon needs a lot of nurturing and then so I think that as well as the sun and the moon both being below the horizon as well as the sun kind of being cut off it's like cut off from the rest of the chart so i was talking to deborah earlier we were discussing how she in order to be queen she really had to take on a certain role so it was like she had to let go of a part of herself her, her own identity in order to play this part of the queen and i mean that must have been really hard but you know she really felt like she was it was her calling to to serve the country and be the queen so so I, I guess a sense of self self sacrifice also comes here, and I and then again I look at that Neptune in, in Leo, and the Sun that rules Leo is by itself there, right? So I don't, I just see the connections there. What do you think about that? Well, and I see one other really right along in line with this is you look at the Neptune twenty two degrees opposite the J Jupiter twenty two degrees uh, conjunct Mars. And then we're going to go opposite again the the uh, moon, okay? And so this is an interesting little story. One of the things that we did in preparation for this reading was we both watched the the video uh, from Netflix called The Crown, and it's the very first uh, the very first um, series, the very first one. And so what you're seeing right here in this reflected in this chart directly was when the king approached Philip, her husband, who is now the father of three children and the the uh, the father, the king is now dying. And so we're talking now in the 12th house of loss. He approaches uh, Philip and tells him that uh, he needs to give up his career in the Navy. So uh, the, the details in Leo in the sixth house, he's a Navy man and that is his passion, his love, his moon. That's what he, that's where he feels the most at home. He feels in that watery place, but he's being told that in order to be with this, this fiery energy, this mutable energy, he's now in, in the sixth house, he's being told that, okay, you need to step away from your career and support the queen so you can see this in this stellium right there 12th and first house where mars would represent philip jupiter would be him losing his career right there 22 degrees then going on the ascendant to support the queen in venus and and have it look beautiful but then go on and look at and that it was shocking and upsetting to him and it was a huge loss and then note that he had to start thinking differently in order to collect himself and move on. And I just paused 
and say something? Like, sure. Say something. Okay, so that was really beautiful, but I was just laughing in my head because right, right away, we are such psychological astrologers. Like, we're, we're reading the chart psychologically. Right, but that's part. That's the foundation for the reading itself, I believe, because it sets up maybe why she died. But the thing is, though, when we look at something psychologically, shouldn't we be looking at Placidus then? No. No. Mm -mm. no. no. Psychological is as medical as the brain is as, this is where we do not respect the truth. The brain is just as medical as any part of the body. Right, but how would our reading be different if we were looking at possible? Oh, it'd be a lot different because we'd really be digging into her disassociation. We'd be providing, um, we'd be pro providing diagnosis. Okay. For, Should we for the, at this point or not? Because I'm wondering if someone, someone in the audience is going to be thinking like me. Yeah, go ahead and, and cover that. Yeah, because that's important. That's right, again. Okay. That's... I'll just, I'll just, we can start from here. Then. Okay. okay, go ahead and take it over. So I just wanted to say, I mean, um, we're going to continue with this flow, but I just wanted to add for anybody, in case anybody's watching and wondering uh, why we're talking psychologically, even though we said that medical astrology, we look at whole signs and psychological astrology, we look at placidus. I just wanted to say that Deborah and I, uh, we always see both the psyche, the mind, and the body connected. So as a whole, as we're approaching this, we're going to be talking kind of back and forth between psychological as well as the medical. But if we were just going to talk, talk psychological, we would focus a lot more in depth at, you know, the, the, at what is going on with her psychologically with her self-identity, this dissociation thing. But right now we're just kind of surface looking at them. We're touching on them, but we're not really looking at them too much in depth, right? Correct. Because the mind, the body, and the soul, we are we are connected up in various ways. And when you break down and separate out parts, you miss important details. So for that reason alone, we're we are going to just more or less stick with the um the the kind of the way we've learned it which you know of course in all fairness and authenticity this is how what this is the gift that we bring that farnoosh and i bring to the reading itself to the reading process so um and one of the things that i'm looking at here uh in this chart okay her 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 issues below the horizon but you can see that she's got one two three four of her planets four of the of, of what we're going to be looking at, the 10 different important things are in personal houses. Okay, they're in a personal location. And then we're going to move over into look at the fifth and six, fifth and sixth house where she's got three more. So all seven of these planets are happening below the horizon. Four of them are personal three of them in transpersonal her saturn is in the uh range of uh of uh, universal and her mars and jupiter are in the um in the same uh they're in they're in universal in aquarius so when you break down the medical how would you see these issues as well Okay, and another thing that we do in medical astrology that's really important, we're looking at quincunxes, and those are going to be um, assignments in the chart that are five houses separate. And so you can see right over here, she's got her ascendant in Pisces, uh, quincunx, her natal moon in Leo. And this is significant, okay, because this is telling me that this whatever medical issue that this dramatic uh problem that she acquired somehow in the public right being a being largely in public okay and a communicable i would say the leo suggests in the sixth house it was a communicable disease it was something that was being uh that was actively going on 
that caused her death. And so you can see this in the quincunx, and then you see that she's got Pluto quincunx her her midheaven in Sagittarius, which further says that it was something of a toxic nature, kind of watery, okay, that more or less was fiery and hot. So there was a, there was like an infection. But in this sense, now in the fifth house, it's going to have a, an indication of heart. And because we're talking in cancer, it's going to involve the valves. And one of the things that we know about this, and it is quincunx, is that she could have developed leaky valves and suffered from a pulmonary embolism. This was one of my takes. Now, Farnoosh, you, I, I don't know if you had a different take on this. I know that we've walked through and we've looked at this and we've decided that that was a good take and we were going to. Yeah, yeah I, I like that take as well. Yeah, we've been looking at it in detail. Right. And so when we read, I want to make this clear that it does take Farnoosh and I a good deal of time to actually assess the chart and come forward with a reading. And be, that being the case, because we want to provide you the best reading we can. And that, you know, this medical astrology that we're doing is really, in a lot of ways, going to be a, a very new way of looking at medicine and how to care for your body and uh queen elizabeth being you know that she was 96 years old and and taurus she lived a very long and healthy and fortuitous life compared to to many and if not most and so uh you know she had a you know an amount of fortune given to her that many of us would have just really loved to have enjoyed but you know not did not have such luck 